Good evening, folks. 30 seconds to showtime. Grab your seat, leave your drinks to the bar. Hold your breath, put your hands together. We present Stanford Bay's finest star. Who has danced with the Mary New Guinea? Who has dined with the Queen of Vermont? We trace the voyages of Sinbad. Corresponded with the men who kind of us to all right, and hello, uh, welcome to the G Spot. Uh, my name is Jeff with the G, and right there to my that way uh, is uh, is Josh from a Strange Remains Curio Shop. Hello. Right yeah. How are you doing today, Josh? Doing good. How are you? I am doing well. Now to uh, sit and hang out with you. Um, let's see. We met back in January because uh, I decided to be crazy and take a trip to Vegas back when the world was real. Uh, it feels like six years ago, but no, it's back in January. And then uh, I was killing time uh, because the person I was with was getting at a tattoo at a really great tattoo shop. Uh, and they go, yeah, there's this really cool curio shop. Uh, why don't you go check these guys out? And then we ended up spending like, I don't know, like two and a half, three hours just talking about oddities and sideshow and stuff. And I just went, all right, cool. I like hanging out with you, just talking with this guy. So when it came down to doing the show, I go, let's talk to this guy because I bought some really cool stuff from him. So uh, why don't you, uh, why don't you guys, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's get the elevator pitch. Let's get the, uh, let's get the, uh, let's get the elevator pitch about the shop and yourself. Okay. So, um, we have the shop in Vegas. Uh, we opened it up about a year ago. Um, and actually once COVID hit, uh, everything shut down and, uh, we had some disagreements, uh, you know, going on with the landlord who was demanding rent, uh, in the middle of the month when it wasn't even close to rent time after we were shutting down. And so they, they did that to everyone. They lost about, I think now, uh, nine people are gone out of that place and it wasn't that big to begin with, you know? No. So, um, you know, it hurt having to close the shop. Um, so we just went all online and, uh, then we decided, um, you know, Vegas with no tourism, there's no way to make money. So, uh, you know, we got an opportunity and we, uh, bought a big shop and house up in uh, Idaho, and so we moved everything up here. And um, we're getting everything rolling right now. Is we're we're just starting to get organized and be able to start selling again. So, uh, kind of a pain, but um, you know, the shop is something we're passionate about because you know we both have been in the sideshow business, you know, for you know decades and whatnot, and uh, we love collecting and we love sharing our weird interests with people. Well, yeah, that's, that's why well, we're friendly because of that. <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, in fact, uh, on the screen right below you, we actually do have your Instagram mark, which is Strange Remains Curio Shop. Please go there to check out some of the stuff. He just, you just, what today, just posted a really cool, funny, weird video, uh, which I, I really dig. But it's, I really dig it a lot. Uh, yeah, we're, we're trying to get get back on all our social media because it got neglected after the move and, uh, you know, with everything going on, and so well, yeah. we're, get, we're we're getting back into it. <laughs> well, yeah, because I think the last thing I'm gonna I'm gonna grab it right now because I think the last thing you posted before that was this, which I ended up picking up because it is the glory of my collection now, and so yeah, uh, yeah, this yep. thing is amazing, uh, and so yeah, it, 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 no, you can't have it. Uh, my dog, my dog, uh, got like when I opened this box, he's like right here at my computer. Uh, he got right. obsessed with this thing, so I went, "All right, cool. This is staying on a high shelf." Because, <laughs> fact, uh, in fact, you, know, you can actually see his head, and he is transfixed. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put, you, I'm gonna put the rabbit back. Um, right. <laughs> so, he's, he's he's licking his lips. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the thing I picked up online, and of course I got the shirt online as well. Uh, yep. Whenever the website goes back live again, because I know it's down. And then when I got was at the shop, I actually got that from you, which is the Jack Earl Texas Texas yes. uh, Giant Ring, because I live in Texas. It makes sense. And Jack Earl was one of the tallest guys ever work sideshow. So yeah, 
Yeah, great ring. And, and I mean, the giant rings are just cool in general. I mean, there's so many of them to collect. Oh, I, I was just curious. Yeah. That was the one I wanted. So, like, it worked right. out. Like, a, I don't need to have all of them. I like having that one. Right, and, uh, right. <laughs> Yeah, I, I went on the mission to try to collect them all, but I mean, some of them are just outrageously priced, you know, and uh, you can't find them. So, oh, well, I'm sure like the Wardlow is probably the the, the cream, the creme. Uh, the, there's there's uh, there's some different ones. Um, uh, Johan Peterson uh, okay. Star Ring, which is like, you know, I think I've seen two of them in the last fifteen years, and uh, they oh, go for true. big money when you see them. Uh, yeah, that's that's very true. Uh, yeah, I got it. Like with the, doing the other show I did, which is called the Devil's Hour, uh, which mm-hmm. is like a variety show. But I always do a, like a history corner where I talk mm-hmm. about classic. And for a long time, I talked just strictly Texas sideshow stuff. But it had to be anything pre nineteen fifty because anybody's mm-hmm. alive today, I could bring them the show. So it's like, all right, cool. I'm gonna talk about the old like many of the Myrtle Corbins and the Hilton sisters. But like my first show, I did that uh, did it talk about stuff. I talked Jack Earl just because I had the ring. So I went, all right, right. cool. So I have this thing. This is why it's legit. And, yeah. uh, and I got to have it talking about all the other stuff. I even talked about things like the Shields Brothers and all this other stuff. But now I've moved on. I, basically, I ran out of anybody who had anything of note or long enough for me to talk about uh, for te- Texas specific, but I've gone beyond it now. But it's still a fun thing to do because I like the history stuff. Right. But yeah, just right. you, uh, me getting that ring spurred me to talk about that and like spreading the love of the history of the stuff because i think it's very important absolutely and that's awesome because it, it really is like i mean fascinating the history of all this and there's so much you know and uh that's one thing i loved about being on the road and you know traveling with the sideshow on the carnivals is meeting all the old showmen and hearing stories from these guys you know you sit there for hours and hours just listening to like stories from the 40s and 50s you know uh, uh, for, uh, uh person in the chat because this is the only cool thing about uh twitch uh twitch is that we have a chat so people can talk to us and ask questions please do so mm-hmm. we appreciate it uh we have a person free collector 57 apparently i guess he found out you're on the show uh wadlow never had a ring because he never pr- officially performed in side show that makes sense. I just want to say, I just know he's probably the most famous of the giants as far as yeah. the classic ones, but yeah. You get one of his shoes and it's worth some big Oh, money. that's, yeah, that's probably where it's at, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, that's fair. It's, it's I'm, uh, I'm still new at, like, basically, I'm just finding stuff that I think, for me personally, I, I've got stuff that I think is cool that I want to have part of. I don't collect for the sake of, like, I don't want to just go, oh, this might be worth my... I just go, oh, that's a cool thing. Like, the Texas giant ring. That's a cool thing. So right. I live in Texas. And then, you know, the other stuff, you know, the rabbit, the the, uh, the, the clown rabbit, is just an amazing thing. It fits my aesthetic. Uh, and then just the stuff I'm slowly collecting is weird stuff. Uh, right. So, yeah. <sighs> yeah, there's, you know, there's that's the cool thing is, like, there is so many aspects of, like, you know, I know people who are really interested in just collecting the you know old cabinet cards and uh stuff like that or people who are into collecting personal items from you know the sideshow performers or whatnot i mean so many aspects yeah oh uh oh free collective it's kevin garone is the one is oh, yeah. yeah he's the one that says hi uh <laughs> hi kevin yeah but uh, that's the only reason I like doing the show because I like talking to you know, other people. Like uh, like I talk you know, like you know, talking to you old people. Like I had Chris Christ on the show last week, and mm-hmm. uh, it's like the great. And like now we've gotten to the point where we're now going. All right, cool. We're going to be doing it regularly because I think he likes the idea of reconnecting with the old. You know, going. All right, cool. Let's let's let the let, let the history go around as we talked about history earlier. So that's why I like. Right. I like to. I, I like. Well, I live in the. I live in the now for as far as performers. It's like there's the uh, what the uh, what the old like what. Chris Christ likes to go to the nightclub, the nightclub acts, because you know, yep. there's no tents anymore. I mean, there, there's like a handful of, there's literally a handful of, of tent shows. So everything's now, you know, nightclub acts, and that's what I know. And so, he talk to people who like who actually tread and like work the tents, or even the people who like who are also part of the scene that never work the tents. Because there's people like there's old timers who, they strictly work stage, but it's still mm-hmm. legit. So because. Sideshow is anything that is not part of the norm. Yeah, and, and it's a different mentality too, you know, like, I mean, I spent, I spent the majority of my life in a tent and um, 
to me, there's it, there's no comparison because I did nightclubs and I did you know uh, fairs and birthday parties, yeah. you name it. Um, but working in a tent is just a totally different vibe, you know. And uh, most people can't handle it because it's it's long hours and it's grueling, man. You're doing you know sometimes you could do 120 shows a day. Because the faster you turn the the crowd, the more money you make. Yeah, it's uh, that sounds <laughs> fine. No, uh, no it's, it's one of those things. Like, it's it's also it's, it comes out like because you said you grew up in the tents. That's a complete because you grew up in that lifestyle. And me, like for me, I mean, I came into this late in life uh, for stuff. So it's like different mentality. I I I come from the music background for other stuff too. So it's like a completely different vibe too. But, um, right. It's really interesting, cool. Uh, so, what uh, I know you do the collecting and doing stuff. What exactly did you do? Uh, you know, because you said you grew up in the tents. Was there a specific mm. act you worked on, or are you just completely behind the scenes sort of guy? I I did acts. Uh, I think I started performing at, when I was like thirteen, mm -hmm. and then uh, you know, a juggler, fire eater, fire blower, all that stuff. Did all the glass acts and blockhead and okay. all the traditional you know sideshow stuff. Um, and I worked a bunch of, you know, kind of lower budget circuses and, and then, um, you know, found my love in the sideshow tent. And, uh, you know, once I did that, it was, it was, it was over. I mean, I love the circus, but the sideshow was just, you feel more at home there, you know? Oh, I, <laughs> I always, I always make like, oh, there, there are circus people and there are sideshow people. I mean, there's nothing wrong with both either way, but it's like, and I, I would, my joke is I go, I, I look circus, but I'm totally sideshow because uh, because I clean up really well, uh, so I go yeah I look circus because circus is nice and pretty and I'd say like, I can I can dress in a nice suit but my mentality is strictly sideshow, uh, yeah. but uh, that's really cool that you I mean you grew up and did all yeah that's like the, did all the sideshow stuff and like like some people like a lot of people watch this they know a lot of it but some people they go oh no I go, no it's yeah blockhead sticking something up your nose essentially. Uh, there's right. a lot more to it than that, but you know, but it's one of those. You know, visually, this is what it looks like, and then fire, right. and then all the fire, manip fire manipulation, which includes breathing and blowing, and eating. Right. Um, yeah, glass stuff. Uh, that's I get, I'm getting really. That's part of the jam I've been getting into lately. Is working out new and cool and interesting ways to do glass uh, without mm -hmm. being derivative, and then mixing in some other stuff that just makes it mine. Because I do a lot of weird mentalism too, and so I try to add in sideshow into mentalism is a really fun trick. So, yeah, yeah, and it, you know, it's all about you know experimenting and, and figuring out new things, you know, and uh, and that's the cool thing to see is like there's a lot of performers out there that are are doing new things and crazy things and whatnot, mm -hmm. um, and putting putting new twists on things. But I also look at, you know, there's been so many performers over the years, it's hard to do something that no one has ever attempted, you know? As, especially with like limited things like a blockhead. Well, yeah, know? then it just comes down to what weird, it, then it comes down to the weird stuff that you put in there. It's not about mm -hmm. the, the act, it's almost like a, uh, it's like a Phoenix Fire from Canada does a, like an embalming mm -hmm. machine. Uh, that's new and unique, and I've, I've seen him do it. It's amazing, it's crazy, but it's, that's the only way you can get different on some of that stuff right well and and for me it's about presentation like if someone presents it you know in a new way that is, you know that usually is is more eye-catching to me well, like yeah. hey i haven't seen anyone do that that's great i completely agree um so uh growing up in growing up in sideshow and circus and living in tents and things like that and such uh who was um i mean for those of us that are in the biz for like who would who would you say was like the biggest person you worked with um i mean i you know almost uh well over two decades now it's uh you know there's not many people i haven't really done a whole lot with yeah um you know, I've met pretty much everyone at some point, you know, because, you know, back when when I started, it wasn't as big of a group of people. Well, yeah, you know, so everyone kind of knew everyone. And in the last like decade, it seems like it's, you know, kind of exploded with, you know, a ton of little groups here and there and, you know, whatnot, and which is good because it's, you know, it should um, motivate people to improve their stuff because, you know, like 
let's say 20 years ago, people would, you know, I, I want to say it like kind of get stagnant. They would learn something, they would half ass it mm-hmm. and they had no reason to improve. But now there's so many people out there, you have reasons to improve. And uh, I think that's super important, you know? Well, Everyone should be striving to do a little bit better, do something a little bit different. Well, yeah, uh, as I've been busy like doing this stuff and I work with the uh, the Southern Side Jay Hootenanny, uh, mm-hmm. I do a lot, uh, and then I'm noticing a lot of the well, I'm late to the SciShow game. I'm not a young guy, like in age-wise. And so there are a lot mm-hmm. of young, hungry kids in like the early 20s that are really into SciShow and trying to figure out the stuff. I mean, these are people, I mean, they're not, they're they're the whole another generation. So it wasn't like they were spawned from the, uh, the Jim Rose era or even mm-hmm. the previous era. Uh, so it's like they're people that discovered it, who knows how. And so they're trying to figure out new stuff and things like that. So these like 21, 22 year olds are like doing some of the craziest stuff. And uh, it's really fun to see. Uh, like I was on a show, a digital show. And so we had an after hour chat through Zoom. And like literally I was going, wow, I feel really old here. <laughs> I just, yeah. I just yeah. like literally, cause I was on the way, I was like, all right, cool. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, some of those kids, I mean, they, they've probably been performing for actual size or size show and maybe as long or if not longer than what I had been doing stuff specifically in size show. So I go, I feel so old and yet I go, I don't, uh, I'm going to uh, see you guys later. I just, we have nothing to, but it's like watching them talk and like they're hungry. And so, mm-hmm. so all the, all you old timers that might be watching this either now or later, because that's the great thing about Twitch is people can watch this later. Don't rest on your laurels. Um, if you did have, if you've been doing the same act for the last five or ten years, it's time to change it up. Yeah. <laughs> and I yeah. know there's people out there that do it. There, there's a lot <laughs> of them out there, you know. And and I get the you know stick with what works. You know, people get comfortable and they do a stage show and it's the same thing. Um, you know, I've always been a person I could never do a scripted stage show. Um, because I just can't do the same thing over and over again. I could do, you know, like a juggling routine. It'll be a little different every time, but it'd be, it'll be pretty similar. Yeah. Um, because you're just going through the motions. Uh, but I could never do the same pitch on stuff. Um, that just gets boring to me, you know. you got to play around and have fun and read your crowd. Well, that's because uh, a lot of what I do is talk. Uh, I'm just, in the end, that's what I do. I'm an MC talker. And so I like literally I have to talk with the crowd and interact with it, and that's how I create the story of whatever's on stage, because uh, that's really what the goal is: is you're still crafting a story. Uh, yeah. But it's like I know there's some I mean there's some stuff like I went and saw some acts you know for several times now and like I will watch it and I go that's really cool then I will watch it like two years later and go this is almost the exact same act uh, and this goes this doesn't really prescribe just a sideshow like this happens in music. This happens mm-hmm. in comedy. This happens in blah blah blah. I mean, you've got to always constantly. Once once you get comfortable, it's time to sh- change that shit up. You don't have to do yeah. big. You have to go. All right, cool. I got this routine down. Now now you can figure out ways how to play with it to go beyond whatever that set pattern is. So that we go. All right, cool. I now I can do blah blah blah. Now it's time right. to, to add right. the thing. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and 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 one of uh, the groups that I've always uh, admired because they do always push the envelope is the Bindle Stiffs. Uh, oh, you know, amazing. Keith Nelson and that. I mean, always doing some crazy new acts, and they're always really good. Well, know? that's um, that's uh, yeah, they're, yeah, they're polished. Yeah, they that's uh, that should be the benchmark for any any sort of variety side show vaudevillian show that should be your benchmark as you try to go not imitate them as far as content but in attitude yes yeah <laughs> and, and and another one is also um like go go amy uh when she has the pretty things i mean oh the pretty things is amazing i met her phenomenal her, show yeah no, like her like her and like matt scott and just uh yeah. Which is another thing I don't think it's enough play is Matt Scott, who does the Rasputin's Marionettes. Uh, it's also a sideshow, but another thing you would never think of. And uh, <laughs> so, because the way it's, you know, when you, everybody says sideshow, is like, all right, cool, blockhead, fire eater, glass, manipulator, blah, blah, blah. And then you go, no, no, there's other stuff. Like, you know, you got Matt Scott, who does Marionettes. You got Chris McDaniel, who does the Wild West acts. You got, those are all sideshow. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Guess what? Burlesque is also sideshow because that's where it came from. Uh, <laughs> With the girly shows, so that's why that's why I tell people that and they go, "What?" I go, "No, you don't understand. Like, that's, burlesque came from the girly shows, which is sideshow." So, yeah, yeah, and there's some really good uh, books out there too uh, about girly shows. Oh I yeah, mean, if you, like reading the history on them and and some of the stuff that used to go on. Just, I mean, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, um, that's what I'm going. Oh yes. Oh, I was gonna say, I, I, you know, I'm a, a big advocate for reading books too. You know, on the on the history of all this, and uh, oh, yeah. you know, I try to really go for people who wrote books that were actually in the business. Oh yeah. Um, because those are really great, but there's also a lot of really good books that you you know you can't do that. Uh, like actually, Kevin's book about uh, Hell's Bells, Pete Hennen, amazing book. I'll give you a plug there, Kevin. There, yeah. Since you're watching. Uh... Oh, oh, he actually he popped the thing as oh, what about working with Jimmy Z? Oh boy, <laughs> yeah. We, yeah, many, many, many years. I may have to that. bring uh, Kevin. I may have to bring. Well, I may bring Kevin on in a minute because it might be interesting to have a co-host for this because I think he has a lot of stuff. If you're into it, Kevin, draw the line. If not, oh, uh, yeah. if not, usually what happens is after the show is done, I'll usually throw the link up and then we do like an after like after broadcast and have a chat offline. Uh, which, if you're up to it, we can chat with other people if, if they choose to join. Uh, yeah. But anyway, oh, Jimmy yeah. Z. No, you know me and Kevin been friends for. Uh, a good long time and definitely over 15 years i'd say um kevin kevin's a good guy and he knows his stuff when it comes to history too um oh yeah i think but, uh i think he, he's working on a book with somebody uh as well with, right now. with chris yeah i know it's yeah uh, <laughs> yeah chris wanted to make some pictures from him but uh, i think he was out of town at the time because but we'll talk later kevin uh anyway jimmy Z. <laughs> so yeah um so uh I started to work for Jim. I was actually going to work for either uh, Ward because uh, I talked to Ward and then I talked to, to uh, Jim and uh, I was like, well, whichever one of you get back to me, I'll go out with you for, you know, the season. I, did, I had some time to kill um, between my own season I had booked and uh, Jim called me first. He was in Puerto Rico at the time. And so um, I ended up going out with him and it was supposed to be for, I think it was six weeks. And uh, the guy he had was just a weird dude. You know, he ended up doing drugs and getting in a bunch of trouble on the carnival. So uh, I was like, well, Jim, I'll finish the season out with you. You know, and our seasons were long. We're talking, you know, 10 months. Oh, yeah. Um, so uh, he's like, really? I go, yeah. So after that, it was like, you know, I was out there for, you know, years and years. Uh, my life consisted of living in a horse trailer, going town to town, and uh, we were out, I think, at that, at, after that, we were out 11 months of the year because we started doing um, a Christmas play, uh, Wonderland in Miami. So we'd be there through the winter. It was, you know, it's kind of nice. Um, Basically wintering someplace, but also working. Yeah, yeah. But Jim, Jim, it was a blessing working with him because he was, he was a circus guy. Um, one of the most interesting people I've ever met in my life. Okay. And uh, very fortunate to have got to spend so much time with him. Um, you know, he was he was a, a juggler in the circus, a magician, elephant trainer, mm -hmm. you know, and just all around smart guy. Okay. And, uh, you know, he I got to, you know, study under him and just, uh, you know, learn so much. Um, it really, you know, it's like, you could spend days talking about all the all the you know, you know amazing crap you learned from someone you know being on the road with them because like i said you're around seven days a week uh you know you you don't get breaks you're around each other from seven in the morning till when we close at midnight yeah so um but it, it's cool you know uh and seeing his show grow because when i first started with him his show he had a nice show um, great banner line, whatnot, but the inside was really lacking. Mm -hmm. And we had, you know, these jar boxes um, that we'd, we'd have to haul the jars around in. And we're talking, they weighed about 250 pounds. Oh, wow. And so you're trying to like lug those in and out of trailers. And um, 
it was a nightmare. So then, I'm gonna flip on the light real quick. So then, um, you know, we were talking about moving and trying to be more efficient on the road. And so um, uh, we ended up building circus wagons to haul all the attractions in. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and then as the years went on, Jim's getting a little older and he started getting a little more like, oh, yeah, now we need these hydraulic stake pullers and the tractors to do all this. And I'm like, man, you know. <laughs> I, ever, anyone who was out there the last couple of years had it made, you know, because uh, when I was out there, smarter, it, was, not harder. It's... it was rough. <laughs> you know, our setups would take like seven hours uh, when I first started. And, and uh, the last time I set up with him, it took us, I think, two hours. Oh, wow. From, nice. from start to finish, you know, just pounding in tent stakes, getting everything up and going. Okay. But, uh, you know, and it was cool out there because we had the live animals, we had the the um, the museum going, we had live performers as well. You know, we had human oddities out on the road. Um, uh, John came out with us before. You know, Jackie was out with us. Um, uh, and, just for uh, it, it's one of those. Uh, just make sure uh, people you're making reference to make sure you have their full names because some people watching the show don't know who you're talking about. Oh, that's, so. that's true. Yeah. John John Houston, the the yeah. flipper boy. Oh yeah, he's, and, a, uh, he's a good guy. So yeah, yeah. We and, talked and, about uh, him. My my other half, which is uh, Jackie, she went under uh, Jackie the Human Tripod. Um, that's uh, I was talking because uh, I I produce because uh, the. Uh, the first show of the night on Sideshow uh, Side Saturdays is uh, the, uh, the boob tube with the amazing Boobzilla. Mm-hmm. And I produce her shows. I work behind the scenes. I go, yeah, I'm having this guy, you know, Josh and stuff like that. I know he's, and it's like, like it totally escaped. Like, because like, like, we talked about your, your, your better, your better half, for lack of a better term, uh, for a bit when I talked to you, but like her name mm-hmm. completely escaped my mind when I was going, yeah, and his wife, and what's your name? I go, I don't remember. <laughs> Cause it's, uh, but it's like, not, not a bad thing. It's like a horrible thing. Cause I, cause I didn't actually, I think part of the problem is cause I didn't actually meet her at the time. So it's one of those, I, I remember a lot better that way. So it's like, a, but yes, your, uh, your wife is also a, uh, was, is also, or was a performer. So. Yep. Yep. She was for many years. And, uh, yeah, that's funny. I, I met, uh, uh, Boobzilla years and years ago. She came out, um, and uh, they wanted to do some ballet stuff on when we were at the I think it was the Tulsa State Fair, so that was a lot of years ago. Yeah, I mean she's in Vegas now, so it's like that. Uh, yeah, a, a lot of people move there, and then it's like now what do you do? There's <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, like it's weird. Like I know a lot of performers out there chatting with like her and like Juliet Electric is a sword swallower, Andrew S. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, well. You know all these people, but let's, yeah. let's just drop all these names because they're really. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's like really, it's like really weird. So like a lot of the current performers, a lot of them do because it's performers in general. If you're not mainstream, Vegas is a natural draw, like a light, like for moths, because that's where yeah. all the like the non-standard performers. It's see if you're uh, if you don't care about drinking and gambling, you go there. If you do, then you go to Branson. Uh, right. <laughs> either way, right. Uh, it's really the difference. Uh, uh, and then, like uh, for the uh, for the new wave uh, side show people, a lot of them a lot of them live here in Austin. Uh, yeah. Uh, like the the, the ninety like the Jim Rose era. Uh, yeah. Of side show people, a lot of them live here, except for Jim, who lives somewhere in Europe. Uh, but. Uh, and then a lot of the older crowds there, they're they're either in Florida or Georgia. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's weird. It's it's almost like it's, uh, um, you know, what version of of the sideshow you're more into. You yeah. know, like the the old school showmen who are still on the road. Even though there's, you know, Texas has a lot of them that are, were based out of there, and there's still some that are. Yeah, but, um, yeah, it's mostly it's mostly we see mostly uh, we see mostly the uh, the Mexican circuses here. Those mm-hmm. are the ones that are more con- like at least they have a, a lot more regular tours. Uh, we'll occasionally see some of the smaller ones hit like a like a fair or something like that. But you know, I mean, like mm-hmm. like World of Wonders has I don't think World of Wonders has hit Texas and 
probably several. I think they did Lubbock or something like that one year, a couple of years ago. But it's right. they don't hit those like the the big circus like that or like uh, Great American. I don't think has ever been down here that I'm aware of. I know a lot of Texas performers that perform for that. But right. Most of we see Mexican right. circuses here. <laughs> yeah, we we used to play a lot in Texas. Um, you know, because it was we'd always open in uh, Austin at the rodeo. Well, yeah, and, it's, uh, there's a good play here. That that was years ago. <laughs> it's it's really like uh, it's really surprising because like I was noticed I was, I talked with some of the other Texas performers and like we're just, like 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 Texas is that weird kind of space. We're just going, dude. It's like three hours. It's like literally, like some cities like Houston, you can make a living just touring Houston. Because uh, mm-hmm. it's big enough, you can get away with it. But even if you decide to go beyond that, I mean, it's surprising that there aren't, like, for some of these cert, uh, some of these tent shows, uh, they don't make, they don't use Texas as one of their things because they literally can go, you know, Dallas, Austin, Houston, San Antonio. Because even San right. Antonio is like an hour away from me, but still, that's a completely different market. Right. But maybe it's just timing. I don't know. Uh, sometimes well, it is. That's what it is. Some of it is too. Like you know, for the tent shows, um, you know, because we there's it also gets like hot like we were saying earlier, there's about five of them. Yeah. And um, you know, for us, it's too. You know, we we could go down there. It's a little bit of a drive. Yeah. But it would be worth it. Yeah. And um, but it's also hooking up with a carnival or whatnot that down there that'll take you. Uh, it's, um, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, I guess that makes sort of sense. Like, or you, you have to play the state fair circuit, which, depending on what it is. And to be fair, Houston is fucking hot as shit during the summer. So I also don't yeah. blame most of these tent shows. Like, All right, cool, summer. We're in, like, the north part of the United States because it's night. Yep. Well, at least relatively, it's cooler. But Yeah. And they just go, yeah. all right, cool, we're done with that. And we got to take a couple of year, months break. So it's, it's just unfortunate. We, like, I, I don't see tent shows here because... The best we get yeah. is what we'll get like Hell's a Pop in, uh, doing a nightclub mm-hmm. act. So that's gonna be the closest we're get, like in Texas. That's the closest we see, uh, other than the tattoo convention market, which is a another viable right. alternative. Right, right. That's true, and and you know it's a. I think some more shows would venture down that way, um, you know. But it's carnivals are, are you know especially carnival owners are a whole different ball game. And if they've had a bad experience with a sideshow operator, it is hard to get them to trust you to book you in there. And there are a couple, you know, there have been some in the past couple, you know, guys who would just like burn up spots. You know, you you try to go and they'd be like, oh, no, last sideshow guy, you know, was stealing all the money. And, you know, because they get percents and whatnot. And yeah. if you're not honest, um, you, you're not going to be playing. Well, that's, yeah. No, I know it's one of those. It it makes sense. Uh, it's just it's just unfortunate. That's all I mean. Yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Because that's I, a... for uh, for a long time, actually, because I because doing the the history about sideshow and stuff like that is like actually Houston was a long time winter residence for a lot of smaller circuses. Uh, in fact, uh, South Houston, the city house Houston was actually built by elephants. Uh, because one of the side show, uh, one of the uh, circus owners, uh, just basically went, you know, I like we're like living here, so I'm gonna live here. And he left, kept this basically because all right, cool, these are my elephants, they're gonna stay here. And he became mayor of this small town in like southern, like called South. It was actually called South Houston. Uh, mm. And so like some of the road work was actually done by his elephants. That's awesome. Yeah, That's it was awesome. this weird, fascinating thing. As I came across, I go, this is really cool. Um, and so I look really I, I, I'll have to look one up but like it's one of those uh, it's like I think it's a, maybe it's Barnes I think uh, like the Barnes Circus the guy from he ran the Barnes Circus I think I don't remember off the top of my head uh, I've had just mm. enough whiskey I don't remember uh, <laughs> <laughs> well and, and in that area too like even Oklahoma uh, you know like Hugo Oklahoma is has got circuses based there and they have the Showman Cemetery there oh that's true yeah, yeah. And that's a, I mean, that's that's a little drive from you, but it's well worth going to. The Showman Cemetery is awesome. I'm I'm down because uh, I. It's one of those things I go. I still have to make the circuit. I have to go uh, go to Cleburne, which is where Myrtle Corbin's grave is, and I want to yep. go see that because. 
on what they did to bury her is amazing. Uh, <laughs> so uh, it's, and I talked about it on my show already. Uh, all I'll just say is that to make sure that no uh, nobody tried to dig her up to use her as like props for you know Josh right. essentially uh, <laughs> for lack of a better <laughs> term. Uh, they, they encased her in concrete to make sure nobody can get out of her body. And so there's this huge slab in Cleburne uh, for her. And Myrtle Corbin is the four-legged woman. I mean, she yeah. made a ton of money. Uh, and she retired by the time she was, like, 19. I mean, it was, like, crazy. Uh, and then had, like, four kids. Uh, but anyway, so it's one of those. Uh, but the Showman, uh, Showman Cemetery, I'm down. Uh, I know in, I, I discovered uh, in San Antonio there's a big circus museum as yes. well are like yeah so i'd like it's one of those are oh cool they're closed right now due to covid so i'm waiting for whenever they decide to open stuff up or whenever they go all right cool you can come in you just got to call us first and i'm going uh there's a lot of really cool like mexican like because they have a lot of the old mexican circus stuff which is also really fascinating and plus a lot of the the a lot of those texas-based stuff because there's a lot of people like that there were a lot of circuses that used to winter in texas Absolutely, absolutely, and and yeah, and they also have the big uh, Ripley's Museum there too. Which oh, that's is really true. Good. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's that is still open. So <laughs> I didn't think I was like, like it, closed, it didn't shut down yet. Uh, Believe like it or everything. not, I'm sure it's one of those at a time. I, mean, I have to check. Maybe that might be that might be that might be open through stuff. I don't know. I may check that out and do that one day. Um, all right. Ba -ba -ba. So, uh, once again, any people watching, because we have people fluctuating in and out. So, uh, hey, this, uh, my name's Jeff with the G. We're watching the G Spot. I'm talking with uh, Josh, who's part of the Strange Remains Curio Shop. Uh, it's an amazing uh, shop for all oddities and weird shit, uh, for lack of a better term. Um, <laughs> currently, he, uh, they're basing and resetting stuff up online, but you can go to their Instagram, which is right beneath this picture, which is Strange Remains Curio Shop. Uh, to look at some of the stuff right there. If I'm willing to bet if somebody had a question or an interest as far as going, hey, do you have blah, 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 they can message you that way. Is that fun? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and if someone is looking for something specific, you know, I know collectors all over the country. I can usually track down just about anything. Yeah, uh, it's like I, I talk. It's like you and there's like one other collector I know, but he's in Atlanta, so it's like that whole. Like, I think between you two. Oh, uh, Freeman. Yeah, is that probably Jeremy? Yes. Uh, no, yeah, Freeman. Uh, Freeman of Fugate. Uh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, James Freeman. Yeah, James. I know James because he come. He uh, he will always come out to the hoots. So it's one of those. I know James, and so mm -hmm. I figure between him and you, I can probably get just about anything, at least in the U.S. And then uh, I can. T I know like one or two people in Canada, so like. It's one of those, if I really wanted something, not that I need anything. Just, right. Because I never know <laughs> what I want until I see the picture of it. It's like, literally, I didn't know I needed a rabbit clown until you showed that picture. And I go, well, yes, I need to have this. Right. Uh, and that's really what it comes down to. So, like, if something like that pops up, like, not necessarily that specifically now. It's, it's going to be random shit that I'm going to find and go, that is a cool thing I need to have. And, like, I got something from uh, Canada the same way because I went, that is a thing I need to own. Uh, right. it's, it's, a, it's a weird, unique thing. Like uh, uh, Mysterion, Christmas uh, Mysterion from uh, Canada, mm -hmm. uh, he did like a live auction on uh, yeah. YouTube, on uh, Facebook, and so I watched it. And I, I, I've known Mysterion for a bit, and he actually uh, he had, he even had a couple items I just couldn't refuse. And one of those was a three pronged uh, scorpion, mm -hmm. so it is. And then the other thing was uh, uh, it was a uh, it was a weight for. We're, uh, we're on Twitch, so we're just going to call it Sugar. Uh, it's a uh, wait for uh, merchants uh, from uh, the Silk Road from back in, like, 1850. And so basically they use that, has a little weight, has a scale, and so you measure as far as making sure it was a pound or whatever it was. Uh, right. And so it was, like, a thing that doesn't, like, it's one of those things. It was such a weird item that I'd never seen before and never knew existed. Right. And, you know, it's at least 150 years old. That's cool. That's cool. And and there's a lot of pieces I have like that where I'm like, you know, I just seen it and I fell in love with it, you know? Yeah. I'm like, I've never really seen one of these. I think I need it. Well, that's, yeah, that's basically the idea. I, I just saw, I was like, like when, uh, cause I, I bought, you know, for my birthday, because like every year I, I do something weird for my birthday. And so I bought tickets to go see shows for my birthday. And 
COVID happened. And so I got refunded all the money for my tickets. And so I go, all right, I don't know what they do, but I want this money. This, it's still considered quote unquote spent money. Cause even if I got it back, I, and so that, how that came across and then finding other stuff and basically creating the collection of stuff, which I'm slowly <laughs> building right there. Uh, some of that is like, 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 you know, other performers I have have their stuff. Like there's uh, like Tommy Gunn's uh, uh, snake oil and like Reggie Boucher made a ca- uh, really cool candle. And then other stuff like the gaff. I mean, somebody gave me a Houdini action figure. I go, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Something that's supposedly haunted, like a weird haunted, supposedly haunted clown thing. I go, I'm on board. So. Right. <laughs> Why not? I, uh, that's what I thought about it. So I, I love the well, it's just weird shit. So, uh, so anybody who's watching and, and you know if you're looking for weirder stuff, this is the one of the guy. This is the guy to talk with. Talk with Josh. He's always done me right. Uh, and you know, especially if you're a if you're a sideshow, if you're if you're really a big aficionado for sideshow stuff like that, he gets it. He's uh, he's with it, uh, as, yep. as 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 we like to say. Uh, <laughs> Yep, yep. That's and and you know what? Like I said, that's that's the artifacts from sideshows and circuses. Um, you know, those those are my my uh, main collection. Uh, I guess I, I guess I'd be an enthusiast. Yeah. So I mean, I, I have you know hundreds and hundreds of old circus programs from all around the country. Um, you know, posters and whatnot and photos. So. Um, and my thing is, I, I go. I, I, I'd have to peruse the stuff because I don't know what I want. It's like the things I go. I don't know what I want or need until I see it. And so, I'm gonna have to, at some point when the world is right again. Uh, right. Uh, well, it's just, <laughs> I, I don't. There's a lot of performers out in the Seattle area anyway, so it makes an easy mm-hmm. use. I, I can do the track, and if you know if the drive, it's not that really a weird thing to make a drive through Idaho before making my way that way. Uh, oh yeah. To do a stop, which I recommend. If only because it's, I mean, you get potatoes and then you can go visit Strange Remains. Uh, but I yeah. know you're, uh, I know you're setting up a new shop there, a sort of yep. thing. Why don't you talk about what your, what, the, what, what the plans are for Strange Remains in Idaho? Ooh. Well, um, you know, uh, we're mainly focusing on the online part yeah. um, and uh, focusing more on our museum again. Um, because we want to be back on, on the road with the museum and, okay. and uh, doing that. But we also love just the, the buying, selling, and trading of uh, oddities as well. So, um, you know, we've got a big shop here that we're decking out with all the merchandise and whatnot. Um, and there's a actually a kind of like a curio shop in town. We live, we're in uh, Idaho Falls. Okay. So, so, which is a good location. We're like, you know, two hours from Yellowstone and three hours from Salt Lake City. Okay. So very south. Uh, we're actually in the area that where all the potatoes grow. <laughs> so, I was just kidding, but yeah. Well, I don't but, I hope potatoes the Right. Well, it's weird because uh, we used to live in North Idaho, right on the Canadian border. Okay. And there's no potatoes. Yeah. You know, I never seen a potato. And uh, up there and then we come down here and it's just nothing but potato fields so it's it's a <laughs> it's a different world but um but yeah so we're, we're just you know um we're our goal with strange remains is just to keep um you know the store going and uh the museum and and everything to try to help educate people and keep you know the sideshow going you know yeah. keep the tradition and and uh you know because i'm i'm real big into history and tradition uh i uh i i'm cool at, like at least you know making sure people understand all of that like the history like it's a lot of times like uh it's making sure people are aware where stuff came from because that's always a good thing right so even with, like whether it's a fan or an actual performer i do yeah. uh, i i do instructs so uh fun story i'm not gonna tell like who this person is even though they're not gonna be watching it anyways but uh so uh, I'm part of a, a sideshow group uh, that includes mm-hmm. Gabs Clown and stuff like that. And so uh, like, it was like a year and a half, two years ago, um, a, 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 man, uh, a, guy, a, a guy basically decided he wanted to be a sideshow performer. And he used to work with Scabs 
at like some haunted house because scabs at haunted houses would do side shows. He works at a mm-hmm. side, you know, basically it was like, all right, go see this event, event. Hey, you want to kill some time? Go sit down and watch the side show. And that's what he did. And so we, uh, he used to talk so much, well, he used to talk so much shit about for scabs and stuff like that. So when I found out, I go, hey, scabs, this thing's going on. So the entire, our entire group showed up at this show to watch this guy who was his first time side show. It was his first time side show, but he always talked so much shit. And we literally watched him do Scabs' act from the uh, the haunted house. Right. All like right. I mean his fa- like his like his character facial expressions. His character's name was also na- uh, a character name from somebody else in Sideshow, which also didn't help. Um, right. But I'm also the guy going, all right, cool. Like afterwards, like, yeah, I, I go, hey, I watched the show. He goes, well, what did you think? I go, all right. And this was like right after Ward died, Ward Hall. Uh, I go, mm-hmm. all right, so. Uh, Here's the thing. You totally ripped off this guy's act, like, blatantly. He goes, oh, I go, no. Just don't even try to defend it. I mean, I get, like, if you haven't seen a lot of Sideshow, you're emulating the person so much. Fine. But, like, it was blatant <laughs> that you did right. his act outside of talk. The only thing he didn't do is he didn't talk. But the actual physical act is all almost exactly beat by beat. I go, all right. Yeah. Two is, you're named after somebody who's also a Sideshow performer who lives three hours away. <laughs> it's it's one thing to go. All right, cool. You named yourself off with somebody who like lives in Europe. Eh, it's sketchy, but I, that's fine. That's you know that's yeah that that's that name UK versus US. That's that that, that would have been amenable, uh, but you no. Know, literally, the dude lives like three hours away. Uh, so that's you know, you know I go, so it's like then you got to think like you talk about things you need to make sure you understand this stuff especially history you know things like with Ward Hall and stuff like this who's Ward Hall I go all right now you really need to learn your history because all right the dude just died and basically the reason why I, I think you could argue, like a lot of people can argue the fact is that the reason that like, there isn't even there even is modern sideshow is because he's the one who kept it alive when it really needed to be kept alive so you need to. He goes, all right, cool. I don't think he's performed since then because uh, I don't know whether he's scared of us or rather he just went, yeah, this is way too much work to deal with. Because I go, just know your history. And so, like, so I, like for me, when I now do these shows and talk to people like yourself or, like, doing the history from the Devil's Hour and stuff like that, it's just the idea is making sure we're aware of history because yeah. it's very it's important. important. Yeah. Um, and I talk about the more uh, for Devil's Hour. I always talk the more uh, the biologicals versus the work tax because it's one of those. It's it's because that's the thing we don't see anymore either. Very rarely. It's I mean it's you might see like with like you know Zilla. Uh, Zilla does some stuff. Like uh, she had Dakota Cook on, who's a bearded lady, and then uh, of course your uh, your uh, your better half with the yeah. you know, the bio you know the biological acts are not are are few and far between. Most people are just like. Just are just, well, know. and and I, and I, I mean, I I think too, like, because I've seen this happen, is that the people don't respect the biological natural yeah. borns, as yeah. I like to call them, just natural borns, um, anymore, because it's all about the, a lot of the new generation. It's all about them, you know. They're all about the applause, and so when someone else outshines them, yeah, they don't want them around, and yeah. um. Which is interesting to me because I think like, you know, I've worked with a lot of natural borns and whatnot, and I love seeing them up on stage and the reactions and, um, you know, but the, I'm not up on stage for the applause. I do it as, a, you know, it is a job. It's a passion and I have fun, yeah. you know? Well, it's uh, like me, I, 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 it's, I mean, who will grow, whoever's on the stage, they kill, that doesn't matter to me, like, in that end, because I go, you know what? Uh, well, yes, the uh, the, the natural born is biologicals. They, I think a lot of people get upset because that's the one thing they, can, you know, go, I can't be half a person. <laughs> so that's, I can't do this. I think that's why a lot of, like, a lot of the, especially a lot of the young, like, a lot of the young kids are really interested in seeing those acts. And then the mm-hmm. ones who actually do stuff beyond just looking, uh, right. They actually do stuff as well as when they really. Uh, I, I would see why some people get pissed off. Yeah, they don't just look like you know like a bearded lady, but they also do sword swallowing and blah blah blah. And so that's really upsetting. But right. Right. My, and I go, I go. Everybody pays the same ticket price. 
Uh, mm -hmm. So if somebody else gets more people to buy tickets, I'm happy. And then if I have to make, my, I'll make my show better. More of that self-containment of yes, I did great. Or I killed tonight. Not to be better than other than the fact is it's like natural great um, competition. Like I want to do better because yeah. I want I'll, the, the applause is the meter, which is still fine. You know, I that's if they get better applause, that means next time I got to bring out something different to make get a better applause. I mean, I'm not going to let somebody's you know. Uh, uh, advantage i guess for a lack of better because like in weird like like, like in sight show somebody who is a biological or a natural born has a thing that in any other circuit or any other place is considered a disadvantage except for in sight show when that's considered the advantage and right. so i'm not gonna let that advantage stop me from going all right cool i can't do that thing but you know what i can talk better i can i can put more mousetraps on me or i can I right. can do this weird well, trick. Well, and the thing, too, is like, you know, with the, the natural born, they don't have to do an act. No, they you don't. Know? They come out there, they just do a meet and greet, and and that's, you know, what intrigues people. They want to see that, yeah. you know. Um, you know, if you go and you see someone with, you know, lobster hands, and then you go see someone pound a nail up their nose, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm more intrigued with the lobster hands. Well, it's the thing you know. that you're not going to, it's like, a, like a, you know, in theory, you could do a thing up your nose, but you as a person cannot have lobster hands. So yeah. that's the entire, you as a woman cannot have necessarily have a beard. Right. Unless yeah. you have a husband and you're not heterosexual. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but you know and 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 i think that the the thing is like there there still is natural borns that are performing and whatnot but a lot of them have like phased back their performing because i mean they have all you know big events and whatnot they're never invited you know uh, and it's, it's like weird to me i i agree i think uh, i think that should be celebrated i mean there's not there's yeah. other art Oh, there's some types, like, there are actually some types of uh, natural-born acts that are no longer considered weird. All, the other thing, there's also some natural-born acts, like, you know, you're not going to see much fat people anymore because there's just way too many in real life. Uh, right. uh, right. That's what it comes down to. Uh, I mean, you might see a few, but if you see any, that's because they actually will do acts versus just kind of be there and, you know... Oh, I did like a happy. Uh, I did. Talk, I, I talked about Happy Jack Eckert. That's the other reason. Like, that was really is top of mind. I just talked to him. Uh, you won't see many. Uh, you only see many like like tattoo people. Like, unless they get really extreme with their tattoos. But even though that's, uh, yeah, unless anymore, you're Lizard Man, even... Matt Gone, or Enigma, nobody really cares. Uh, or uh, Insectivora. Uh, it's one of those. You only have a handful. You have to go extreme uh, with your uh, with your your tattooing. I mean, if you're just body cover nobody cares anymore right uh, well and 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 that's a self-made situation yeah. you know and that's and that's the thing is like they're they're self-made um which is cool and all but it still doesn't compare with the natural born well yeah and even know? like even if you have people who are like uh tall like extremely tall uh because of because really because of the nba uh, right. <laughs> it's just it's like you you see me go wow they're tall oh well you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, like I lived in Houston. Yao Ming, who was like one of the tallest people ever, uh, and people go, "Wow, that's really tall." But because he played for basketball, nobody—it's one of those boys. So of course he is tall because he's in basketball, right. and so it right. became kind of the norm. So like, like to go to like like a like a sideshow or a carnival to see a tall person, well, it's still interesting and amazing because seeing it live. But that's not a draw anymore because I can watch TV with similar people who may not be quite as tall but still tall enough where you go oh yeah they're tall right right like, yeah, and, you know, fat the, people i live in texas they're just way too many fat people right here now so it's just not gonna <laughs> but and, and you know it's like when you go to like a ripley's believe it or not they they usually have the uh wadlow robert wadlow oh, yeah. statues there and you get to see how massive that dude was and you don't think nba because you just look you're like get to stand right next to him yeah but I think that's a different feel because you're in a totally different environment, you know? Uh, yeah. Uh, the uh, Museum of Natural Science in Houston does a thing mm -hmm. with Yao Ming because uh, Yao Ming played with the Houston Rockets, and they do a very similar like, place. You can go to the museum, and you actually have to stand in his footprint and, like, they show how tall he is. And so I'm right. sure it's the exact same way, but the difference is, is what they did 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, Wadlow. Uh, I, I think. I, I, you know, I think he's still the tallest American, but I don't think he's the tallest human anymore. Uh, I could be wrong. Uh, people can correct me, which is fair. Uh, it happens all the time. I don't expect to be a, a, a master at all this sort of stuff. And once again, whiskey. Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, we're just about out of time, Josh. Man, I really appreciate this. I would like whenever you get there, because yeah. I know right now you can only reach uh, him through the instagram uh, account or uh facebook or facebook yeah uh because uh i know the website isn't ready yet i know you had a website but you're redoing revamping the website which is cool right Uh, i can't wait to see that thing because once it goes live i'm gonna post the shit out of it and then once that goes live well maybe we'll see if we can bring you back on or maybe we might do like a quick like little segment for the other shows all right cool here's a new thing for like two or three minutes go here's our new weird shit all right here's our favorite find because i think uh this is one of the things I go, this is all really, really, like, yes, this is niche and, like, but everything's niche nowadays. Uh, but history and all stuff is really, really important uh, for us to understand, especially as performers, to know where we came from. Uh, right. The, uh, right. Yeah, if, you know, as you said, there's only so many ways to do a lot of things, but we have to understand where that stuff came from. And so people like Josh, uh, like, you know, like, like James Freeman, Freeman Fugate, uh, I try to do what I can. You got like James Taylor. You got all these other people trying to make sure I understand the history of it, and uh, yeah. so that way we know what came before us in order to make stuff better. Because if you don't know your, it's like if you don't know your history, you're doing to repeat it. Yeah. And right now we're at a time where I don't want to repeat, so we want to make sure we get everything ahead. So. Yeah, and and then a great resource for uh, history and information is actually a uh, sideshow world. It is. Which and I think James Taylor took that over. If I'm not mistaken, I don't know. I'll, I'll ask James at some um, point. Because uh, I know John Robinson used to have it out of Utah, and uh, I was talking to him a little while ago. I think he me- he mentioned something like that. Yeah, uh, um, but so much history on there, really great. Yeah, James Taylor of the uh, Shocked and Amazed. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, so I've got his book. Uh, I've done. I uh, James came by phone and talked with Chris for a bit last week, and it was uh, mm-hmm. yeah, and that was really fun. Uh, anyway, thank you once again, Josh, for coming on. Uh, we got another thing coming on. We'll come up to you. But uh, people want to hang out and chat with. I'm gonna throw the link on. The, if you want to chat with people, you can also say no. Fuck those guys. That's also fair. But I'm gonna see if anybody else jumps on. If you'd like, okay. and then uh, we'll have fun stuff. I'm just gonna put the link in. Copy the link. Put it in the uh, chat. Uh, so if you guys want to join us and chat, because I have a, a Zoom link, so we're gonna chat about stuff. Because so we'll chat about stuff off air. Uh, so mm-hmm. that way. Though we can actually say names. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Not really. Uh, but thank you once again, jo- uh, uh, Josh, for being part of the show. I can't wait to have you back when the show comes on again. Uh, at some point, I'll make my way up to see you again up in Idaho. Uh, Absolutely. Whenever the world's going. And you're welcome to come down this way or wherever I end up being. Anyway, you guys be safe, be cool, be groovy. Uh, and as always, keep drinking. <laughs>